If you're thinking about moving and you wanna learn about what everyday life is gonna be like in your new town, this is the place for you. On Open House, we sit down with local top producing real estate agents to help you find the best places to live in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So if you don't want buyer's remorse and you wanna find your dream town, we are here for you. So go ahead and book a free call with us and we'll help guide you to the area that is right for you. Now let's jump in and learn about your new home. Hello everyone, welcome back to Open House. I'm Mike and today we're gonna to be talking with Ashley Brooks, a local resident and expert in the King George County area in Virginia. We're gonna be covering everything from homes to entertainment. So Ashley, thanks for coming on the show today. Uh, to kick things off, how long have you been in real estate? Thanks Mike. So I started in real estate in 2010. That's a decent chunk of time. How long have you lived in, in the King George area? Yeah. So. I've lived in King George, this is kind of embarrassing, but since 1993. I, I don't, that's not embarrassing. <laughs> it's been a little while. No one's gonna be like, I, you know, I don't trust her, she didn't venture out more, you know? If anything, <laughs> it just gives you more credibility in the area, you know? Yeah, so it was 93 or 94. And what, what made you get into real estate? So um, I know a lot of people like fall into real estate. I did not, I aspired to be a realtor since I was in high school. So um, a couple of years after I graduated, I went ahead and got licensed and joined a team with um, my mentor that I had known growing up. I, that's a good point because you, you hear that a lot. It's, it's a lot of people kind of like, oops, I'm in real estate. <laughs> you know, that like, yeah, I, I slipped, I fell and, and now I drive a red Mercedes and I show houses <laughs> on the weekends. No, right. I totally planned it. <laughs> so you're definitely you're definitely the exception, not the rule there. Uh, yeah, which is good. Uh, you know, you're, at least you're someone who uh, actively enjoys what you're doing and made that decision to go that direction. And stuck with it, and I, you know, and I started. You see a lot of people that start part time. I definitely started full time, um, and I started in a down market in 2010 after the crash. We still hadn't gotten back to where we are today. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Well, that's that's good because you end up being a little more seasoned by stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, honestly, I don't know that I would give the same credence to someone who got their license in the past three years when uh, every every house was a golden goose and then you could do no wrong. Uh, you know, I'd rather someone who's kind of been in the muck when the markets aren't exactly the best. Yeah, and I'm definitely... Um, seasoned in negotiating, whereas the past couple of years we haven't really had to do that other than negotiate the price up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the negotiation is you saying more. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, more, more. All right. So when it comes to the the King George area, area, what would you say the kind of median price is for homes around there? Um. So right now our median price is around four seventy five. Okay, uh, that's that's really not bad. Are we talking like single family homes in that price range? Yeah, so um, single family, They we don't have a lot of townhouses or anything like that in the area, but it's mostly single family colonials. You know, when you look at King George on the whole, you're not talking about a densely populated area for the most part, which I think is what a lot of people are looking for, especially in that type of area where, you know, you're not the big city. Excuse me, you may be in a small area, but anything you want to do is readily accessible for you. Right. I call it a rural suburb. Yeah. <laughs> and... and and you know you're seeing an influx of people who who put more of a premium on their privacy and their 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 peace and their free time mm -hmm. which is they're they're willing to you know take a half hour 45 minute hour commute into the city because they know when they come home at night there's peace and quiet they know their neighbors you know there's a there's a there's a comfort and catharsis you get in that that you kind of just can't in the city Right, exactly. You know your neighbors. Um, I always say, like, my husband will be like, oh, I'm going to go to the grocery store. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be a little while because I know you're going to run into someone you know, and then you're going to be catching up. But that's definitely how it is. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, oh, I, I, I was going to be two minutes, but then I saw this person. And then we, did you hear about this? And then it's like, 
you have to do that. They, everyone has to commiserate and make sure everyone's up on the same gossip. Right. You know, which is very important. Sure in the small you don't wear your makeup. So when it comes to the kind of economics of the area, I like talked about, I think there's a decent amount of people commuting. You probably have people going everywhere from there because of the location. You know, you got your DC, your Richmond, your Fredericksburg, they're probably heading all over the place. Right, yeah. So most people are headed north. Um, DC is probably the furthest you see people commuting, but there are a lot of people that go to DC. Um, and that takes about an hour and 20 minutes to get there. They also, the next county over um, west of us, Stafford County, they have two VRE stops. So you'll see a lot of folks, they'll ride the VRE to work. So you can get to DC from there. You can um, get to Fort Belvoir, to Quantico, um, Crystal City. You'll see a lot of people riding that VRE because there's no traffic. And it probably takes about an hour to get to DC on the train. Which it's a, it's a weird position to be in where you're saying that an hour commute is fantastic. But given the nature of the area, uh, that's a good time. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and compress before and after work, especially with a train. Like when when you're when you're commuting via car, it's not quite the same experience mm -hmm. because you have to actually drive. Apparently, or so the police have told me. But when you get that train, it's nice because you can just go. Okay, on my way to work, I've got an hour to chill. I take a little me time, even though you're not by yourself. It's still me time. You know, you can check your emails, run through all that stuff. And then on the way home, it's like a built-in decompression time where I think everyone kind of needs that when they're done with work. Yeah. Don't have to be frustrated with traffic. Yeah. It's like you get to go, all right, I'm going to hop on the train. Maybe I'll take a nap. Who knows? <laughs> but, but the point is the world is your oyster for an hour on the way home. You know? Exactly. Um, is there any larger industries in the King George area? Not really. The biggest thing, if you're not working for the federal government or a contractor, you're probably going to be working in one of the trades. Obviously, around D.C., there's a lot of infrastructure and they are always building new infrastructure or trying to keep up with what's already there. So you'll see a lot of folks that um, electricians, welders, builders, that sort of thing in the area. You know, I, the reason I think a place like King George is such a good distance is simply because um, if you get closer than that, then the city kind of starts to reach out. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's like, okay, well, we were a small town, but our proximity to D.C., all of a sudden there's, you know, a big corporate building going in over there. And it's like, well, well, well wait a second. I, I thought I had a nice thing here. And now all of a sudden we're turning into like a mini DC. Yes, exactly. So we don't really have any of the big corporate buildings. Now we do have some smaller buildings outside of Dahlgren, which is located in King George. Um, but those are mostly for contractors. And it's really, um, they're really close to the base. So it's in its own kind of separate area. So another thing I know that the, the, you know, younger me wouldn't quite understand, but older me completely gets uh, is that a lot of people are are making decisions about where to live and, and, and getting very specific about counties and subdivisions and everything because they're worried about education. And it's one of those things where people will make these these big decisions about where to purchase a house based on the quality of the school system in an area. Uh, what does King George look like in that regard? So King George has three elementary schools, one middle school and one high school. So it's still that very rural, suburban feel. Um, your kids, my kids go to King George right now, um, and they'll go there until they graduate. But you know all of the kids your children go to school with, too. That teacher per student ratio is always very important. And that that's another uh, great appeal to, you know, small town living is is that you get those smaller class sizes. Mm -hmm. You get to really know all the people that are involved in your child's education, which it turns out is actually pretty important. Right. Yeah, so, and a lot of the teachers and stuff, they live in the community. So you know them on more than just a, you are a teacher at my child's school kind of level. Yeah, there's a... There's a communication there that you kind of don't get necessarily in other areas. All right. What about the entertainment side? And I, I guess I would probably use that in air quotes too, because we're dealing with a relatively small town here. I would imagine that 
that the majority of your 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 top tier entertainment you're probably traveling somewhere else but yeah. that's almost again not that bad of a thing if you're if you're going i want a date night and i gotta you know trek 20 minutes to fredericksburg or whatever yeah and you know downtown fredericksburg is um kind of on the western part of the county so it doesn't take long at all to really get there there's a lot of little neat restaurants there that are like family owned they're not kind of your chain restaurants so if we're doing a date night we're probably going downtown um and you can walk around there's a lot of cute little shops in the old buildings and it's right on the Rappahannock river yeah i i i love stopping by those stores with my wife <laughs> and, suddenly finding some small knickknack that until now we didn't know existed but now apparently can't live without which is always a delight and they always have like a certain smell you know like oh yeah, yeah this is a good store money it's money yeah. that's the smell <laughs> smells like money but you're, you're you're infinitely more okay making those purchases if you know you're buying from someone local if you right. know it's that mom and top type feel that there's something like the, it just makes the, it makes it easier because you like supporting the people that support you. Right. So an another thing that I, I think people kind of undervalue, especially in the Virginia area and as someone who has lived close to Virginia most of their life is that there's a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to see. And, and you know, be it, uh, one thing I really undervalued was Virginia wines. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I had this kind of preconceived notion that you grow up with where like if it doesn't say Napa Valley or Sonoma, like why am I even drinking it? Oh yeah, Virginia's wine country. But yeah, you I, I've been to quite a few wineries in the area where I'm like genuinely surprised. And both in in the quality of the wine, which is very good, although I don't know if I've ever had a glass of wine I didn't like by the end of it. <laughs> But also in in the scenery because you don't have to drive that far to get to some some really beautiful landscapes in Virginia. Yeah, so we have two wineries in King George right now, um, Back Porch Winery, which is kind of on the eastern side of the county, and then we have one on the western part of the county, um, Whitehall Winery, and those are both great options. We also have a wine festival once a year in November. And they hold it at the state park in the county, um, Caledon State Park. So there are a lot of Virginia wineries that come and sell wine. And it's one of the most popular events that we have. Yeah. And that's another like it. it I mean, granted, buying wine is always fun, but right. it, it goes back into to the buying local. You know, you're supporting something in your area, which just intrinsically feels better. Yeah. And if you don't like wine, there are a lot of vendors there, a lot of unique vendors um selling art and things it's an art and wine festival so, so you're probably getting a, a a lot of a lot of back to the kind of crafts and the local shops and stuff like exactly. that doing their thing and you also probably have a lot of food there mm -hmm. uh, which you know again you're probably getting your local purveyors of stuff like that out there that you get to try a bunch of little things and yeah so is there any other special local events that, that go on in the area yeah, so as far as local events, um, probably the biggest event put on by the county is going to be the King George Fall Festival. And the whole county comes out, starts in the morning with a parade down through the middle of the town. Um, and then it ends at the high school, which there's a carnival, a craft fair, there's a lot of local vendors, um, and then a lot of like local food options. Yeah, that, that's always those type of events. You kind of just it's one of those events you look forward to every year. Exactly. We always plan to go to it. They usually have a couple of other events surrounding it for the fall festival. They used to have a fall festival dance, and we really enjoyed that because all of, everyone from the county would get together, go to the Citizen Center. They would hire a band or a DJ. It was BYOB. You got to have fun with your neighbors and not have to spend a whole bunch of money, but they haven't done that one in a while, probably since COVID, but we're really hoping that they bring that part back. Um, and then they also have a pageant the weekend before, and then the pageant girls get to ride through the parade with their little waves, and the kids always love to see that. Look, a any event is BYOB if you just believe in yourself. Yes. You know? <laughs> All right, so what about the, 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 the type of uh, activities for people who are more outdoorsy and looking to get some exercise? Okay, so... 
for outdoors people, there is the state park Caledon. They have lots and lots, I don't even know how many miles of trails, but lots of trails. Um, and it leads down to the Potomac River. You can't get there by a vehicle, you have to walk. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really nice because you can like explore nature, feel how it was before everything was developed. Um, be one with nature. There's a conservation there for eagles too. So you see a lot of eagles there. And I know people like to, I feel like I see eagles every day in King George County, but I know some people are fascinated with them. And then they also have what's called Dahlgren Heritage Trail. It's an old rail trail that starts um, on the western side of the county, the west northwestern part of the county, and then runs all the way to Dahlgren on the northeastern side at 16 miles. So, okay. and you can ride your bikes, run. I think I've even seen people with horses on the trail before. Yeah, it, it's that's another thing that Virginia on the whole has in abundance is, mm -hmm. is you know, those type of trails, some really cool like nature prospects where you get to walk through and go, wow, this is a really nice trail. And, and especially, you know, even if you want to make a day trip out of it and go West, you know, you can really get some mountainous terrain, which mm -hmm. people look for if they're a little more advanced in the hiking department. I myself like a nice, uh, even plane the, the entire yeah. way around. But I'm not Here's everyone there. Trail is for you then. Yeah. No hills. <laughs> it's like a one degree incline. I can right. handle that. I can <laughs> handle that. Exactly. Um, and then also right now, King George is building a park where the new Harry Nice Bridge comes in um, called Wayside. So that's going to be a waterfront park. It's not finished yet, though. Yeah. And that's cool because you kind of you have both sides of it. You have you have your trails and stuff like that. But you also have the the aquatic side because you're on the water. Because, and that gives you a lot of options as far as boating, kayaking, all that type of stuff. Right. There aren't a lot of restaurants, but the restaurants that we do have are pretty unique. Um, there's a lot of family owned restaurants. And then we have a little, it's not a town, but it's a neighborhood called Fairview Beach and it's on the Potomac River. And there used to be two restaurants there. One was on the beachfront and one is actually over the river in Maryland. So obviously you can travel to Fredericksburg and there's a wide variety of things there. What about options that are more local to the King George area as far as food goes? So in King George, we have a lot of family owned restaurants. They're mostly going to be Italian food. We've got some Greek food, Chinese food, Mexican food. But we also have a little community um, on the Potomac River called Fairview Beach. And it's a little golf cart neighborhood. And they have two restaurants. One actually just closed, but we're hoping that someone will come and open it again soon. The owners decided to retire from the restaurant business, but it was a little beach bar. Um, they had a dance floor. It was in the sand. They had nightlife bands come in every weekend. Um, and the locals really loved it. The food was good. Someone so will scoop up a beach bar. Yeah, we're hoping so. to see that one come back. Um, and then there's also another restaurant in Fairview called Tim's. And it's actually, it's actually not in Fairview. You get to it from Fairview, but it's in Maryland. It's built over top of the water. Hmm. And they have a great deck that you can sit out there during the summer months or warmer times and eat food. They also have a nice bar. There's a lot of boating going on around it. People anchor their boats, swim up. Um, they have a boat taxi, like a little water taxi in the summer when it's really busy. They'll come and get you off your boat and taxi you back to the bar. It's interesting how food and drink just taste better when you're sitting on the water. Exactly. Uh, it, it's just, it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, no matter what, it could be the most, uh, the, a hamburger. Oh, it's the best hamburger I've ever had because my view is fantastic. Exactly. All right. So if you could give one piece of advice to someone thinking about moving to the area, what would that piece of advice be? Really know what, where you want to live as far as King George has a lot of um, different type of living. So right now we have a development called Hop Yard and you're on a little more than an eighth of an acre. So you're really close to your neighbors. The community is really tight knit. They've got sidewalks through there. They've got a lot of neighborhood amenities. But also if that's kind of not your thing, because sometimes we'll see, we see people moving in there and we see people moving out of there saying, I'd rather have land. We have a lot of local builders that are developing bigger parcels of land and building these little um, smaller neighborhoods that you're probably on two acres or more. 
um, and they're, we call them semi-custom homes. So you have a little bit more of options with those builders. And, and I think people don't do this enough. I, I tell people a lot of times, um, I say, go for a vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're thinking about an area, take the time, take your five days, take a week, something like that, get an Airbnb, get something local and feel what it's like to kind of be in the area. And, right. The and, community and know the spots yeah um, and commute to you before yeah and, and it really it helps you get a feel if that's going to be the right fit for you mm -hmm. and it's one of those things that also i i think i think another thing that people undervalue is having a a having an agent that really knows the area mm -hmm. having an agent that is good at understanding what your needs and wants are as a buyer because you may have a list of 100 things but you're looking for an agent that's going to try and get you at, you know, 80% of those things and right. get the stuff that's really important for you and, and the things you're really looking for. And that, that, that's something that I don't think can be undervalued. Well, Ashley, thank you for taking the time to share your knowledge of the King George area with us. I'm sure we all learned a, a pretty decent amount about the surroundings and, and what there is to do there. Um, if you're thinking about moving to the King George area, then make sure to get a hold of Ashley here. Check out her contact information below, and she'll help facilitate your home buying experience and make sure it's a smooth one for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Mike.